Australia will sack 3,000 employees or about a third of its workforce, retire its budget Tiger Air brand and offload its long-haul international jets as part of a relaunch under its new owner, Bank Capital. To discuss, I'm now joined by aviation expert Geoffrey Thomas. Jeff, great to see you. Thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Firstly, what do you make of the restructure? Look, the restructure was broadly in line with what most analysts were looking at and expected uh, that, that the focus would be on a domestic network, about half of what it was. The A330, the wide body A330s that were used on transcontinental routes would go. The uh, international division, which operates 777s across to the United States, would also be grounded. Um, and the focus would be built around the Boeing 737 operating a, a scaled back network. And of course, that's very much in line with the, the, the dynamic of uh, what we're dealing with with COVID-19. So it, it's very much as expected. Um, and sadly, very sadly, 3,000 staff are going to be let go. Uh, and that's a tragedy because they're, they're, the staff at Virgin are, are wonderful, but that's the situation right across the globe. Uh, you know, literally, hundreds of thousands of airline employees across the globe are losing their jobs, which is it's a very sad because you've got all that experience which has been lost to the industry. But uh, hopefully, you know, they will obviously fly through this uh, and then when uh, better times return, uh, relaunch their international division, probably with Boeing 787s um, down the track, but that may be over a year away before they're able to do that. And through this relaunch, what will Virgin's value look like? Will the fares at all be cheaper or will there be any more inclusions like better meals and so on? The product is probably a little bit scaled back from what we've enjoyed. Uh, so particularly the business class end, it's still going to be business class and economy class. Um, a few of the frills are going to go. Um, but the, the cheap fares, yes, they've already demonstrated that uh, cheap fares are in the marketplace because they're going to stimulate the market to get flying. Now, they were hoping to be able to fly across borders, but now they're having to refocus as Qantas is on intrastate flights. So Brisbane to the, to the north of Queensland, uh, uh, New South Wales internally, uh, Western Australia between Perth and uh, the northwest. In fact, interestingly enough, the, uh, I'm told the most profitable route or the best performing route in the Qantas network at the moment is Perth to Broome. And who would have ever thought that? So uh, it's, a, it's a very tough time for them. Mm, how things have certainly definitely changed. Um, in terms of the Airbus A330 retiring on the Perth to Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane route, uh, do you think that that will hand Qantas a bit more of a, an advantage in the corporate space? Look, indeed. I mean, the, the three thirties that Qantas have have got uh, business class beds in the, in the front end, uh, whereas the seven thirty seven uh, just has conventional seats. So, from a corporate perspective, yes, that will be an advantage. At the same time, I would expect Virgin's fares will be somewhat lower in business class, um, and then it'll be a, a choice of uh, value versus uh, a sleep. So there'll be a, a little bit of. Uh, uh, Argy bargy going on in that space uh, to try and lure travellers uh, uh, on, onto Virgin. Uh, Virgin has always said, has said during, for this restructure rather that it will be looking at harnessing company culture in particular. The company's always been known, I guess, Jeff, to have a very light-hearted, friendly touch. But how much of that culture is left after what's been months of, of very much a, a difficult time and a difficult uh, place for the company? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, a number of my friends actually work for Virgin, as they do for friends with Qantas as well. Uh, they're, they've got, they're, they're in good spirits because at one stage they looked like they were going to be, the whole airline was going to be wiped out. Um, so, you know, for the 6,000 staff that remain, they're upbeat. And also the company has said that of the 3,000 that are going to go, uh, they may well be asking them to come back in a year's time. They're, they're hoping to sort of settle on a, a final figure down the track of 8,000 employees. At the moment, they've got 9,000. So for the majority of staff, it's still good news, although it's still going to be tough times uh, for the next 12 months. Now, just on another topic, Jeff, you are the editor-in-chief of AirlineRatings.com and you've just launched COVID-19 ratings for airlines. Obviously, this is so critical. People want to know how they can keep COVID safe, 
when we are flying. Can you take us through it? What is the criteria that airlines must pass? Yes, we looked at six criteria. The first one was uh, the website. The website had to have full details of what the airline offered. And then we have to have masks for passengers, PPE for flight attendants, uh, modified meal service, social distancing on boarding, and also a deep clean of the aircraft every night. Um, and what we found, we surveyed 380 airlines, we found that about 173 did not comply at all. Uh, 38 had limited uh, compliance and about 169 uh, did comply with all the requirements that uh, we had outlined. Um, and in our rating system, if they all comply, then they, they pick up a star. And this is a part of a revised safety rating system, which we've introduced, um, which also now focuses far more on outcomes rather than audits when it comes to uh, accidents and incidents. Um, and so it's a, it's a comprehensive review and refinement of our rating system. And in terms of the safety rating system, uh, you've recently refined a number of airlines due to accidents. Which airlines have been downgraded? Well, one that comes to mind sadly at the moment is Air India Express. Uh, we downgraded these airlines a bit over a month ago. Uh, we downgraded them from six stars because they completed all these audits. But when we looked at their crash record and their incident record, uh, we downgraded them to three. And then sadly, a couple of days ago, uh, they had another accident which was identical to the one they had 10 years ago, overrunning a runway down into a ravine. And, and sadly, uh, 18 people, 19 people lost their lives. So we're very much focused on, um, on pilot performance and we've analysed over 11,000 serious incidents over the last five years. Um, we narrowed that down to 1,200 that involved pilot uh, fault uh, and then rated airlines accordingly. Um, and like another one was Pegasus Air in, uh, in uh, Turkey, which has had three serious overruns. Uh, so there's obviously something wrong with their training. Um, and this is what we're trying to draw attention to. And those airlines are only getting one or two stars, which alerts passengers, prospective passengers, that there's a problem with the airline's uh, training and, and pilot standards. Oh, good analysis for customers, that's for sure. Jeff Thomas, always appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure.